Technology and Protection, Honorable Alice Nanga. Servicemen, servicewomen, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my pleasure to invite you, Excellency, as you join us in this very important milestone in the calendar of the National Youth Service. If there is a true embodiment of the bottom-up agenda, it is the National Youth Service. The 10,000 servicemen and women who are graduating today from the paramilitary service training are drawn from all the 1,450 wards of the Republic of Kenya, meaning that we are truly the face of Kenya and truly the embodiment of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. Your Excellency, the National Youth Service is based on four pillars that we are implementing. And what is in front of you today is pillar number one on the paramilitary training and regimentation. Regimentation because in the National Youth Service, we believe that by working together in groups, it builds discipline, the right ethos and values, and also it gives us a chance to instill a sense of patriotism. After here, we will now go to the next steps in that journey uh, of the National Youth Service through the second pillar of National Service, where these wonderful young men and women will be deployed to carry out several tasks uh, in, term, in assisting our nation building. Our third pillar, Your Excellency, is based on technical and vocational training, where we are already working with the technical and vocation, uh, tra education training institution in further uh, deepening the skill base and the technical base of the graduates who are in front of you today. And the fourth pillar for which you have been extremely supportive as we embark on our engineering agenda is the pillar of commercialization, where we say that other than just building a cadre of young men and women who are going to play a very pivotal role in nation building and rebuilding our country, that we can also create a service that is sustainable, that we do not have to come all the time and seek exchequer support. Your Excellency, from the support that you are giving us in kicking off our transformation agenda under the NOIS reengineering program, we want to promise you that in the passing out parade of the year 2025, we look forward to actually giving you a dividend check, having employed young people and having deployed them to useful commercial purposes and uh, ensuring that we have an NYS that is self-sustaining, that can be able to also expand and uh, get, include more young people uh, in, in that service. Your Excellency, let me take this opportunity to very briefly thank your uh, officers whom you have appointed for the overwhelming support that they have given us to involve the National Youth Service in several aspects of our nation building so that we can be able to absorb even more young people. I just want to cite some state departments who have come forward and uh, agreed to your clarion call to support the National Youth Service. The State Department for Water and Sanitation who have committed to involve the National Youth Service in building small dams and actually expanding the existing ones, desilting the ones that are not uh, usable anymore so that the National Youth Service can be at the forefront in uh, ensuring that the country is self-reliant in matters of water. State Department for Irrigation, with whom we are already working in some areas, building 25 kilometers of uh, a canal in the Tana Delta, ensuring that we uh, participate in the irrigation of uh, up to 10,000 uh, acres that we are going to put into active use to uh, also help our country in matters of food security. State Department for Wildlife, as the Principal Secretary uh, for Wildlife, Sylvia Musea, is here, who are involving the National Youth Service in uh, uh, building water pans within our uh, national parks and ensuring that we actually reduce 
the deployment cycle as opposed to the traditional way that we have been doing this job. State Department for Crops Development, who have already, we had a very successful exercise uh, in the last uh, six weeks where we have been harvesting maize, uh, maize seedlings in Kitale, in the ADC farm Kitale, and the CEO of ADC is here with us, where we have harvested 6,000 acres of maize seedlings that would have otherwise gone into waste. And by the way, we are not doing this for free. The Kenya Seed Company has come here with a check of 13.5 million shillings to pay these young people for our sweat. Just an example of one and many more things that we are going to do to make this service truly, truly sustainable. Your Excellency, uh, the State Department for ASAL and Regional Development, who have come forward to involve uh, the National Youth Service in building of the dams, and especially in mitigation at this time when we are grappling with the effects of El Nino. The National Youth Service and the State Department for ASAL, alongside our other discipline forces within the National Police Forces and the Kenyan Defense Force, are right in the forefront of ensuring we have got mitigation up to 1.3 million uh, trees and our ambition is that before the end of this financial year, we are going to plant 200 million trees across the country as we try to also mitigate the effects of the climate change. And again, we are not just doing this as an act of charity. Working with international climate organizations during the ongoing COP28, we managed to get partnership from the Global Center for Adaptation, from the Africa Finance Corporation, who have agreed to make the National Youth Service a center of excellence in matters of climate adaptation, climate mitigation and resilience. And more importantly, in monetizing the trees that we plant and all the other interventions we make in offsetting carbon credits from those people who are polluting our environment. Your Excellency, the Kenya School of Government, which is also within our ministry, is going to build a new campus in Vihiga uh, to the tune of 800 million shillings, a project that will be undertaken exclusively by the National Youth Service so that we can continue to employ even more young people. And because we are expecting the Kenya School of Government to have a very huge demand, because we are introducing mandatory training for all public servants in the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. So to be able to expand our capacity, we have called upon the National Youth Service to come and help us uh, in this agenda. Huduma Kenya is another uh, state body that we want to cite against within our ministry. And working with our members of parliament, and I have here today the chairman uh, of the parliamentary committee uh, on the National CDF, Honorable Musa Silva, and the chair of the National CDF Board, uh, Honorable Olago Arwood, who have, in a very remarkable development, in partnership with the Minister of ICT, where we, are, we have matched the concept of the Jitume Center for the digital jobs for our people with our Huduma Centers to offer Huduma services in every constituency, funded by the National Government CDF, and with the labor being provided exclusively by the National Youth Service so that we can be able to expand the job opportunities for our youth. Your Excellency, State Department for Housing has been very exemplary in this endeavor. All the early works within our affordable housing agenda and within all our markets have been done by the National Youth Service, starting from Eldoret Market, which we are going to start deploying on, on Monday. And finally, Your Excellency, Finally, Your Excellency, uh, the National Employment Authority uh, is partnering with the National Youth Service to provide jobs for these young people to go out there and get jobs abroad. As we speak, we've just deployed for the first batch of 40 service and women, men and women who are going to the UK for readily available jobs in the UK. And we have agreed with the State Department for Labor that we are going to have 50% of everybody going to work out there, coming from the job number one, which is the National uh, Youth Service. Your Excellency, it can only get better. And we look forward to working with uh, all state departments 
to ensure that the first provider of labor of choice is the National Youth Service. To achieve this, Your Excellency, as I conclude, we have to do two things. One is just to keep the focus. We intend to keep the focus. Nothing is easy. In the beginning, the plan which your government is rolling out might appear painful as unpalatable to some. And in fact, we might get complaints here and there. I want to encourage you to follow the footsteps of my namesake, Moses of the Bible. When the children of Israel left Egypt and they went into the wilderness, they were crying. And some were even saying, Afadari utuludisha kwa farao. Na farao hata alikuwa na wachekelea. Anawambia niliwambia mutajuta. Afadari murudi huku. Lakini walipofika huko kanan, hata hakuna mtu walikubuka ile mashida tulikoyo na yo kwa njia. So we are going to keep the focus. Because once we cross to the other side, even those people who are making noise today, like the children of Israel, they will not remember the problems that they had in the wilderness. We also intend to be innovative. We have to look for different ways to do things for us to change this country. We cannot do things the same way it has been done and expecting different results. Even the person who invented the car, in the beginning, people were resisting, and they said they don't want the car. They want faster horses. But in the end, today we cannot imagine life without the car. So we will keep the focus. We will try different ways. We will try to be innovative and will move and transform and teach this country because that is what the people and God expect of us. And now, Your Excellency, uh, let me take this opportunity to invite the governor of the county of Nakuru, who is our host. Your Excellency, you are sitting in a very interesting ward, the ward where we are sitting today. Last year, on the 9th of August, they went to the ballot to elect six people. Out of all those six people, you are the only man they elected. <laughs> the MCA is a woman, the MP is a woman, the senator is a woman, the women of office is a woman, and the governor is a woman. So if there might be some constitutional issue around that, which I have told Susan we have to look at it, even as we look at the issue of the two-third rule, and you are privileged to represent all of us endangered men species in that endeavor. Madam Governor, welcome. 